Hello, I'm Seth Grover. I'm the creator of Malcolm, the open source network traffic analysis tool suite developed with support from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security's CISA at the Idaho National Lab. We recently put out Malcolm version 3 and thought it would be a good idea to do a feature rollup for this major release. It's our plan that this will be the first in a series of videos outlining Malcolm's capabilities and use cases. So look for more of these in the future here on the Malcolm Network Traffic Analysis Tool Suite YouTube channel or wherever you're watching this video. Anyway, strap in and let's get started. The first thing that you may notice about Malcolm V3 is performance improvement, especially with regards to startup time. While the Elasticsearch and Logstash components are still pretty resource hungry, updates in recent versions of the Elastic stack have cut startup times dramatically, particularly for Logstash. Rather than waiting upwards of 5 minutes for Logstash to become fully ready to ingest logs, Malcolm should now be locked and loaded in just a couple of minutes, depending on your system's resources of course. This release of Malcolm also includes a lot of minor improvements and bug fixes, the details of which can be found in the issue tracker and release and commit histories on github.com slash Idaho lab slash Malcolm. The new host and network segment name mapping interface allows you to assign names for network segments and hosts based on IP and or MAC addresses in Zeek logs. As Zeek logs are processed into Malcolm's Elasticsearch instance, the log source and destination IP and MAC addresses are compared against the list of host addresses and network segment subnets provided. When a match is found, new fields are added to the log as it's indexed, allowing for easier searching and identification of network endpoints. If it's determined that a network connection's originating and responding hosts reside in different network segments, the tag cross segment will be applied to the log's tags field for convenient identification of cross segment traffic. Malcolm requires authentication to access its user interface. In addition to local TLS encrypted HTTP basic authentication, Malcolm can now perform authentication against a remote domain server over LDAP. So far this feature has been tested with and supports Microsoft Active Directory domain services in Windows Server and Open LDAP, each with Start TLS, LDAPS, and unencrypted connections. See the Malcolm documentation for information on how to configure LDAP authentication. Users access to Malcolm itself can also now be tracked via Nginx access dashboards in Kibana. The latest Malcolm release includes a lot of improvements to the enrichment and normalization of Zeek logs as they're ingested. MAC addresses are mapped to hardware manufacturers where possible to indicate, for example, whether a device was manufactured by Schneider Electric, Schweitzer Engineering, or Rockwell Automation. GeoIP ASN and optionally reverse DNS lookups are performed for routable IP addresses. Character frequency analysis is performed for DNS responses and some other host names to detect DGA or domain generation algorithm host names often used by malware. Community standard fingerprinting algorithms are applied where applicable to allow Malcolm's data to be cross-referenced with other tools. Logs are also tagged to indicate connections originating or terminating in public IP space and to identify cross-segment traffic if defined using the host and network segment mapping feature we talked about a few moments ago. Where possible, Malcolm correlates common fields from across different protocols to allow you to view one device's or application's network traffic in the context of the other traffic occurring around it. For example, multiple failed HTTP authentication attempts, followed by a successful authenticated HTTP post operation, followed by successful reads and writes to an SMB file server, could indicate that a foothold was obtained in an HTTP server that allowed an adversary to pivot to another service in the network. A good example of this normalization is the actions and results dashboard, in which actions such as a file was written, a logon was attempted, a web page was requested, and the results of those actions, success, access denied, page not found, can be inspected together regardless of protocol. Malcolm's list of parsed application layer network protocols has grown thanks to the development and inclusion of some new and some improved Zeek plugins. Of particular note are major improvements to the level of detail provided for several industrial control systems protocols, including BACnet, Modbus, Ethernet IP, and DNP3. 
Support for BSAP, the Bristol Standard Asynchronous Protocol, was added, as well as for TFTP, the Trivial File Transfer Protocol. The list of third-party Zeek plugins Malcolm uses to identify and classify threats in CVEs has also been augmented. See the Components section of the Malcolm documentation for a full list. Speaking of Zeek, Malcolm leverages Zeek's ability to detect and carve files from network traffic and can now scan these extracted files with up to four file scanners. ClamAV, an open source antivirus engine. Yara, the pattern matching Swiss Army knife. Kappa, FireEye's portable executable capabilities analyzer. And VirusTotal, an online database of file hashes. Hits triggered by these scanners are logged, the offending files are optionally preserved for later analysis, and the details of the scans can be reviewed in the Malcolm Signature Dashboard in Kibana. Malcolm uses Florian Roth's excellent Signature Base Feed for its Yara rules. Custom user-defined Yara rules can also be used. Switching gears from behind-the-scenes components to its user interfaces, Malcolm's Kibana got a facelift in version 3 as we switched from the Elastic BV distribution of Elasticsearch and Kibana to the open distro for Elastic Flavor. This brings a lot of new exciting features on the Kibana and Elasticsearch front, including much more straightforward configuration of alerts, including via email, Slack, and webhooks, a more robust index management policy for index lifecycle, the Notebooks plugin, which allows you to combine saved visualizations, texts, and graphs, and decorate data in Elastic with references to other data sources. Reporting, the ability to schedule and export Kibana visualizations and dashboards. SQL Workbench, an integrated visual tool to run and build SQL queries. And what I feel is the most exciting, anomaly detection for both real-time streaming and historical data based on random cut forests. It's my hope to go more in depth on these features in a future video or multiple future videos. For now, I'll place some links in the video description where you can go for more information on these cool new features. In addition to the underpinnings of the Elastic and Kibana platform, Malcolm V3 itself includes major improvements across all of our Kibana dashboards, especially the ICS protocol dashboards and the security and ICS slash IoT security overview dashboards. Last but not least, Archimy, formerly Mullock, Malcolm's other user interface for data analysis. Malcolm uses Archimy 2.7.1 to provide full packet payload access via Archimy sessions, as well as visibility into Zeek log data as a fully integrated native data source. One really cool feature recently developed for Malcolm and contributed upstream to Archimy is the network baselining in the connections view. It's the ability to easily visualize network relationships and changes to those networks over time. In other words, a force-directed graph of who's talking to whom in my network and what's new in my network. How do my network communications from today differ from those from last week? Well, there you have it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this overview of some of Malcolm's new features. Stay tuned for more videos on how to use Malcolm to get better visibility into your network traffic. Uh, in the meantime, you can find releases, documentation, and source code for Malcolm on GitHub.